Hey guys, welcome to episode 93 of Closer to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another day, and we pray, Lord, that we can continue our study of the book of Acts, learning more about you and also understanding the mission of the church through the activities and the ministries that were performed by the early apostles and early members of the Christian church. Help us to continue in that mission today and work diligently until our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ returns to meet us again here on this world that you have created. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're still in the chapter five of the book of Acts, and we got a pretty lengthy section to discuss here today. And it's entitled, The Apostles Meet Opposition. Imagine that. They meet op opposition. So let's get right into it here. This is starting at verse 17. The high priest and his friends, who were Sadducees, reacted with violent jealousy. You know, when we have jealousy in anything, it's never a good thing. Jealousy is not a good thing. It is something that the devil tries to promote within us and to the people that are around us and within our little group. So whenever jealousy creeps up its ugly head, remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul tells us love is not jealous or envious. Okay. So the high priest and his friends who were Sadducees reacted with violent jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in jail. But... An angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. Then he told them, Go to the temple and give the people this message of life. So the apostles entered the temple about daybreak and immediately began teaching. So this is pretty bold because these guys just got thrown in jail by the people who work at the temple. And an angel of God comes and releases them and tells them, get back to work at the temple and give them the good news. So uh, I'm sure there's going to be some people who are surprised, you know, aren't these guys supposed to be in jail? Why aren't they there? And what's up with them being back in the temple teaching again? So, of course, when the high priests and the, his officials arrived, they convened the high council along with all the elders of Israel. Then they sent for the apostles to be brought to trial, for trial. But when the temple guards went to the jail, the men were gone. Oh, so they don't even know that. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Sometimes the Bible is very, very entertaining in the way it tells the story of the ministry of Jesus Christ. And, you know, here they get together. Oh, we're going to have our big meeting now, and we're really going to put it to these guys. So they send the temple guards to get them out of the jail. Guess what? They're not there. Well, didn't you notice them preaching at the temple grounds? Well, let's see what they say here. All right. But when the temple guards went to the jail, the men were gone. So they returned to the council and reported the jail was locked with the guards standing outside, but when we opened the gates, no one was there. So isn't that very surprising? The place is locked up. There are guards, and they go back there expecting to find these guys, and they're not there. Remember, an angel had freed them. So, okay, when the captain of the temple guard and the leading priest heard this, they were perplexed. <laughs> it's a good word, perplexed, wondering where it would all end. Ha! <laughs> So they're like, how are we going to put a stop to this stuff? I mean, it just this stuff just keeps happening and going on, and, and we don't know what to do about it, okay? So, uh, then someone arrived with the news that the men they had jailed were out in the temple teaching the people. So, of course, there's always a snitch out there. Uh, what's the saying? Snitches get stitches. Not in the case of... Christians, you know, that's not something that we should follow. But here, someone's snitching on the apostles, and they're like, guys, they've been right under your nose all the time preaching here at the temple. So, um, the captain went with his temple guards, this is at verse 26, and arrested them, but without violence, for they were afraid the people would kill them if they treated the apostles roughly. So, see, 
They understand that this message that the apostles are giving to the people is very, very intriguing to the people themselves, and they're getting hooked into this good news from the Lord. It's good news that they've been waiting for all along, and the apostles backing these preachings up with the scriptures, people are saying, wow, this is finally making sense, finally, finally, what the prophets had long told us about that we've studied all our life Finally, all this stuff is happening. So they're intrigued. So when they are getting arrested again, the temple guards are afraid of the people. You know, they don't want to treat them roughly or anything. They're going to be like, hey, you guys need to come with us peaceably. So uh, because they were afraid of how the people would react to them. At verse 27, it says, then they brought the apostles in before the council. Didn't we tell you never again to teach in this man's name, the high priest demanded. Instead, you have filled all Jerusalem with your teaching about Jesus, and you intend to blame us for his death. Hey, if the shoe fits. But Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human authority. That right there, folks. Look, Peter's telling them this. Uh, and the apostles are telling them this, but they're also saying this to us today. We must obey God rather than human authority, okay? Now, if the human authority is in line with what God expects from us, then that's no call for to be disobedient or disrespectful. And of course, we should respect uh, the leadership that's in place because the Bible tells us that God places leaders, okay? So this is not an open uh, get-out-of-jail-free card to disrespect those in authority. What they're saying is, look, if we're going to be obedient to anybody, we're going to be obedient to God, okay? It doesn't matter what human beings try to conform us to, and we're not going to conform to human standards or human ideologies. We're going to conform to the will of God. That's what they're saying here. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by crucifying him. And uh, hey, like I said, if the shoe fits, they did crucify Jesus on some trumped up charges. OK, it was they they just ran that trial through and there was no chance uh, of any other outcome. Of course, it was part of God's plan and it played into God's plan. But, you know, there's no way around it. But they cannot escape the fact that they are indeed responsible for the things that have happened to Jesus, okay? So, then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. This would really ruffled some feathers in that room because this is the place that's reserved for King David, who is held in high regard, of course, uh, by the chief priests and the high council of the temple. But... Uh, now they're saying, look, Jesus is in that place. So, you know, they're not doing themselves any favor, favors by sticking with the truth of what God has told them. So you see, these men are bold, even in the face of dire consequences, they're telling them exactly how it is according to God's plan. And that's how we need to be. Okay. So he did this to give the people of Israel an opportunity to turn from their sins and turn to God so their sins would be forgiven. Wow. Now they're testifying to the high priests and the chief priests and all the officials of the temple. Okay. Which is, hey, you notice these guys are sticking to the mission. They're doing what God has requested. They are giving their testimony and testifying on behalf of Jesus Christ with the new covenant. Okay. Uh, we are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey him. Now, now they're doing some teaching because the Holy Spirit would be a foreign concept in, in some in some ways to the guys that are in this room hearing this, okay? They're familiar about the, the Holy Spirit, but they're not looking at it from the perspective that the disciples are teaching it, okay? So... You know, the Holy Spirit who is given by God to those who obey him. At this, the high council was furious and decided to kill them. But one member had a different perspective. He was a Pharisee named Gamaliel, who was an expert on religious law and was very popular with the people. He stood up and ordered that the apostles be sent outside the council chamber for a while. Then he addressed his colleagues as follows. Men of Israel. Take care of what you are planning to do to these men. Some time ago, there was a fellow named Thutis who pretended to be someone great. About 400 others joined him, but he was killed, and his followers went their various way, ways. The whole movement came to nothing. After him, at the time of the census, there was Judas of Galilee. 
he got some people to follow him, but he was killed too, and all his followers were scattered. So what my, my advice is, leave these men alone. If they are teaching and doing these things merely on their own, it will soon be overthrown. Okay? So this guy's saying, look, we've had things like this come and go in the past, and obviously they were not meant to be. Now listen to what he says next. This is where, uh, this is the kicker that he's given to these guys. At verse 39 he says, but if it is of God, you will not be able to stop them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. Think about those words. That's huge. This guy's saying, look, if this is truly God's message, and now this guy's obviously a very well informed man and an intelligent man because he knows what the prophecies of the Messiah are and maybe he in his own way has put two and two together and maybe has even heard some of the apostles teaching and is probably thinking to himself you know what this kind of makes sense and this falls in line with what the scriptures told us so what this guy is saying is look if these guys are fake then they're going to go by the wayside like others before them have gone by the wayside however if these guys are preaching what God has called them to preach, you're not going to be able to stop them. In fact, you may find yourselves fighting against God. This is a Holy Spirit working through this gentleman trying to teach some uh, perspective to these guys who are so closed-minded and so focused on their way instead of following God's way. Now, I'm sure they follow God's way in some way, shape, or form in their pursuit of the scriptures. But they're not giving God a chance to speak to them through the apostles. And as such, they're jumping to conclusions and judging them uh, based upon, hey, you guys aren't following what we believe, so you know, you either conform to us or else. Does that sound familiar? We have that kind of stuff going on in society today. Look, you either agree with me or I'm going to hate you or I'm going to call you... Uh, very disparaging names, or I'm going to try to make you look bad, or I'm going to try to discredit you, or I'm going to persecute you in some way. I'm telling you folks, if you stand up for Jesus in today's world, you are going to face persecution. You are going to face hatred. You are going to face hardship. Be prepared for it. But God and his Holy Spirit will see you through it, just like he's doing for the apostles here. And look how God is speaking through this man who's trying to be the voice of reason. Look, if these guys are fake, they're going to go by the wayside. But if they are of God, you're not going to be able to stop them. Because who are we, mere human beings, to stop God? And if we go against them and go against God, we're going to be fighting against God. We're going to be in God's way. And that's something that's also a good message for the church. We need to make sure that we're not standing in God's way, hindering the teaching of his good news in the gospel and hindering his mission that he has established for the church. Remember, he is the head. We are the body. The body does what the head commands uh, in our own physical uh, bodies, but in the spiritual body of Christ, Jesus is the head. He's the one that's called the shots. He's the one that has taught us the way to go, the way, the truth, and the life. And that's what we need to follow. And, and this guy is supporting this through what he's saying to these guys. You know, if you're going against God, then you're not going to win. There's no win in that situation. You need to carefully consider your actions and carefully consider the message that these guys are proclaiming out there. If it's a false message, it'll go by the wayside like all the other ones. However, if it's God's message, can we not trust in God's message? That's what he's saying here, okay? So, of course, at verse 40, it says the council accepted his advice. They called in the apostles and had them flogged. Okay, still had them beaten, trying to exercise their authority. We have people like that in the world today, too. They ordered them never again to speak in the name of Jesus and they let them go. The apostles left the high council rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to suffer dishonor for the name of Jesus. They remembered that Jesus said, look, you're going to suffer because of me. The world hated me first and it will hate you too. And they're rejoicing over the fact that, look, you know, they're experiencing these things because they are being obedient to God and they are doing these things boldly uh, for Christ 
Uh, and any hardship that they're facing, they're counting as joy because they know that the closer they are to God in doing his will, the more opposition they're going to face from the enemy. And this is what they just faced in this particular situation. So at verse 42, it says, And in every day in the temple and in their homes, they continued to teach and preach this message. The Messiah you are looking for is Jesus. So we got to be like these apostles, folks. We need to realize that, look, even in the face of hardship and even though we're going to be persecuted and hated and all the rest, we need to stand up boldly for Christ. Why? Because it's worth it. It's so worth it. It's worth it for us in the end, and it's worth it to the people that we give the message to because everyone needs Jesus. Remember those signs that say Jesus is the answer? There is no more truth anywhere to be found in this world than in that sign. Jesus is the answer to the human problem. And as far as I know, and as far as I've seen, the Bible tells us that humanity has a problem. It's a problem with sin. For everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We're imperfect. We're flawed. We have our problems. We have our imperfections. We have our weaknesses. We need to work on them. The only way we overcome them is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is indeed the Messiah. And that's the message that we need to get out to others. You know, we can't just claim that for ourselves. We need to proclaim it to others because that's what our Lord calls us to do. So remember, when you get out there in the world, tell everyone that you know that nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ. And it will make a huge difference huge difference in their lives. Maybe not in that moment, maybe not in that instant, but maybe somewhere down the road, those words will come back to them and will save their lives. So until next time, uh, I'll talk to you soon and get that message out. Do what God inspires you to do.